Hello, 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 landlords. I'm so excited you guys are here today. Welcome to the Better Than Success Real Estate League live Q&A weekly on this YouTube channel. So while you are here, make sure you hit the subscribe button because we are doing lives every week and we are posting various videos every week. We have hundreds of videos about investing in real estate, teaching you how to build your real estate portfolio. And so the information is here. You might as well get it. So hit the subscribe button. I can't wait to get into this conversation today with one of our seasoned vets members who have been investing in real estate for quite some time and they've grown their business and grown their portfolio. And we're going to be answering all your questions. But before we get into this conversation, I have some homework for you. Really small, small homework. Like, I don't even know if you will call it homework, maybe like classwork, you know, the kind of classwork where everybody goofs, goofs around, you know, I don't know why the teacher put his head down for a few seconds. So it's like classwork. So first things first is I have a free download for you. Today's free download freebie giveaway is based on one of our most popular videos on this channel. And that video is how to become your own general contractor, right? So if you're investing in real estate, how to also become your own general contractor. I have a checklist for you. So I want you to go and download the checklist let me post this checklist in the chat and it will also be in the um in the description for those of you who are watching this replay and so for whatever reason this video is private it should not be private what's up what's up what's up everyone and how do I edit this? Public, public, public. There we go. Here we go. Let me make this public. Someone on my team made this video private on YouTube and it shouldn't be private. So, okay. Yes. Um, so download that link, get access to that checklist to become your own general contractor. It might be something you've th been thinking about, might not be something you do tomorrow, but it's something that you can absolutely aspire to do. It makes running your projects so much easier. So, and the other thing, the other piece of homework that I have for you, classwork that I have for you is I'm going to give you guys a few more seconds to hop up in here, but I want you to take this link that you use to get in here and send it out to three or four people. Y'all know I ask this all the time. Send it out to the people you love because you know we be getting it popping in here. And I know you want those people to actually like, it's not fun being successful in real estate and you're the only one in your family, in your circle. So you need some people to do it with you. So go ahead and send this out and have them hop up in here. I'm really excited. Hello, Maxine. What's up, M. Wold Merriam? I hope I pronounced that right. Hey, DF, how are you? How are you? How are you? Post that link right there. So, all right, let me read off our guest bio. And we will hop right into this. Remember, this is a Q&A session, real estate Q&A session. If you have any questions, post them in the chat, right? One of the things that you guys had mentioned on my Instagram post a little while ago when I said, hey, what do you guys need in terms of real estate? Y'all say y'all need mentors. This is your opportunity. I don't want to hear it. They really don't. Don't say you don't have mentors and we're doing live Q&A sessions every single week answering all your questions. All right, I'm going to read off Lorenzo's bio and I'm going to let Lorenzo on the stage. Lorenzo's real estate career started in 2008 when he received his real estate sales license. He quickly found his niche in property management and smoothly worked his way up the corporate ladder, holding positions as leasing consultant, assistant property manager, and property manager. While working full-time in his corporate positions, he built a multi-million dollar real estate portfolio and decided to run his own property management, Jackson Rental Homes and Construction, Jackson Home Remodeling, full-time. He is currently growing his property management company and he received awards as the top leasing consultant for Berkshire Properties, outstanding service for Berkshire Properties, and was recently recognized for his real estate work as 40 Under 40 for Philly Real Estate Week. Yes, Lorenzo. Mr. Jackson is an advocate 
in the Philadelphia in the city of Philadelphia and surrounding counties to teach entrepreneurship within the schools and programs assisting disadvantaged minorities. He regularly attends career days panels and accept mentorship programs. Lorenzo is a married father of two and resides in Philadelphia area. Everyone, welcome Lorenzo to the stage. Hey, hey guys, how are you? Hey, Nicole. What's up, Lorenzo? How you doing? I'm doing well, doing well. Good. So a couple of things I got to let everybody know before we get into this conversation. First of all, I did a little sass when I said the Philly Real Estate Week Award because that is an award that my company gave out when we do Philly Real Estate Week. And we did a 40 under 40. We had a whole voting thing. And um, we put a bunch of names up there and then people voted. And Lorenzo was awarded to be one of 40 under 40. And so that was a grand time and a grand day. And so, yes, time, yes. That was yes. a great week, though. It was. We're actually, um, we're finally, finally going to do it again. It's going to be virtual again. It's not going to be in person. But um, in the summertime, so we do a virtual. We try to, like, over-provide value. So it'll be 20 events in four days. Wow. I know. We That's what we did in 2020, 20 events in four days. Right. So yeah, we're running back. Yeah. So here's the other thing I want everybody to know. Lorenzo joined BTS like when our first or second meetings. And we've been trying to get Lorenzo to speak for a long time. <laughs> and he was shy. He was like, no. <laughs> and then COVID happened. And he was like, you know what? I got to get in front of this camera. <laughs> yeah, because I, I I really just enjoyed uh, sitting back in the class, and I'm a back in the class type person, and kicking it with Jabbar and everybody else that used to sit in the back. So sitting in the front is a little, a little lonely out there, but in the back it was a lot more fun. <clears throat> I'm sure it was. It's always fun in the back of the class. Y'all get to hear the jokes, the side jokes. Wish he got on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what he talking about? He's stupid. <laughs> like, look at him over there. So, but I mean, I think you should. Be proud though, because a lot of people, even in Philly today, um, the better the success tree is all around the mentorships, and everyone who is doing well, I think, in real estate came under the better the success tree from their first few meetings. I don't want to drop any names, but you can go off of like almost 20 people who are millionaires just by the information that they gain from better the success. So, congrats to you and the team that you guys put on together. Thank you. Thank you so much. You saw it from day one. You saw the behind the scenes. You saw everything. So I really appreciate you saying that. So, all right, let's get that. We got that stuff out of the way. I just want everybody to know that Lorenzo has flourished <laughs> from not wanting to speak, just getting the information. Now he's ready to give back, which I can totally respect because I think a lot of times and say this one last thing. We'll hop into this conversation with you. A lot of times people, they will get some information, maybe duplicate it once, and then immediately decide that they're ready to be a mentor or mm -hmm. educator. And it's like, be a student for a little bit, just a little bit. Yeah, well, for a long time. <laughs> like become a master of something. I always say become a master of something and then you're allowed to teach it. But until then, it's okay to learn. Everybody doesn't have to stand in front of the class and teach. It's, it's okay to sit back and learn. That's Everybody the can take time. That's the truth. All right. So, Lorenzo, I read um, your bio off. Why don't you tell everyone a little bit about yourself in your own words? And remember, everyone, um, this is your Q&A session. As things come to your mind, even if it's something from his bio, just go ahead and put it in the chat. I will get to, I always get to every single question, usually, unless it's just like a ton of questions, but I usually get to every single question. So go ahead and the sooner the better for you. So go ahead, Lorenzo, why don't you share um, a little bit about yourself in your own words? Yeah, well, I think you touched on the fact I'm, uh, I've been doing this for almost, let's say 14, 15 years and just being able to grow with better to success. I'm a, uh, we went to high school together as well. So I naturally, I'm a learner and a nerd at heart. So I was eating up all the information. Um, Marcus uh, Knuckles really was the one that projected our my career when I learned what business credit was because I had no idea what it was. And when I say I may have had eight units, maybe 10 when I started, and that next year I bought eight units The in that next year, and the year after that I bought 12. And then the year after that I quit my job. <laughs> so, and then COVID happened. 
So being a, a professional learner, learning your skills and actually executing on the information that you learn was a, a trait that I was able to pick up early on. Um, but by trade, I am a property manager. I love everything about tenant placement, tenant management. Uh, people shouldn't know, enjoy evictions and just the small things as much as I do when it comes to managing the overall process. So whether it's getting a bad tenant out of hard situations or placing a really good tenant um, that's seeing a big smile on her face and making everybody happy. I love that part of it. Did you say you like doing eviction? <laughs> I, I do because you, have you ever had one? By the time the eviction comes, I'm so excited. I'm excited the night before. I'm like, I cannot wait to get this person out of this house. They've been not, they haven't been paying rent for months. I look forward yeah. to that. So um, that's my secret pleasure. Yeah, I got two that I need to be doing. Actually, actually, one of them I negotiated. They should be proactively moving out at the end of this month. But another one that I need, actually, no, two. Yeah, two that I need to do. And um, I'm a little bit nervous about it. And so I, I'm, I'm glad. Well, I don't want to say nervous. That's the wrong thing to say. This is my first time doing evictions. I just, I'm nervous, not for the reasons you think I'm nervous for. I'm nervous because I am nervous about the headache of the process. Okay. What part of, uh, well, have you teamed up with an attorney? Not yet. Okay. <laughs> so that's why this is my, you know how I kept saying to you, we need to talk. And I just hadn't talked to you, but I was prolonging it. Like my tenant was getting caught up, da, 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 da. but now I'm just, I'm just not doing it. And one of them, I talked them off the ledge and then two of them now, y'all got to go. I can't do it. Right. Right. So we'll talk more. We'll talk. We'll, we'll get to that in a minute. Okay. I just wanted to stop there. Cause you said, I like the eviction process. And, I do, and it's constantly changing with COVID. It has changed. You know, the landlords, we kind of took a beating for two years and now, we, you know, we got our gun back. Now it's time for the get back. You know, let's go. <laughs> for I'm sure. Well, yeah. Uh, uh, Matt, Reedy said, that's what I heard. Yes. All right. So, um, so you love the whole process. You are a landlord by trade. I want to just something you talked about Um, very briefly. I do want to talk. I want to, Go down this road. One question a lot of people have is around this business credit conversation, leveraging business credit to buy real estate. And you said Marcus Knuckles helped you. Shout out to Marcus. He's like a brother to me. And he has been a friend of BTS for a very, very long time. Why don't you tell us what that looked like when you made that leap from having eight properties and then being able to just like literally scale overnight? using business credit, talk us through the numbers, talk us through the math, whatever you feel to share and how it worked out for you. Okay. So with the numbers, my first, um, for me to get in and out of a property, I was spending around $10,000 at the closing table. Um, and that's not including the first draw. So maybe $20,000 to get in and out. And as a combination with my first round of funding with Marcus, I picked up, I think $40,000 in business credit. So with $40,000 in business credit, I also had a good conversation with my hard money lender and they decreased my rates and my um, closing costs at the table. So I was buying houses at for $5,000 at the closing table. So with $40,000, not counting the first draw, I was able to buy four houses at one time. I think I bought four houses in a matter of two weeks. And with the cushion you had with an extra $20,000 in business credit, I was just circling. I just circled the money around between my draws and my hard money loan all the way to my first refi. And when you refinance four houses, that's a that's a that's a pretty good day. And then you're talking about almost having six figures um, to work with. You take those six figures and now instead of buying four houses, now you're buying eight. But you just have to decide how much can you actually stomach and how many projects can you do at one time? Um, and by me having a nice, I had three crews at the time. So I was able to get them in and out doing lipstick rehabs until I was able to max out. I think one of the biggest things you have to be ready. So when I met Marcus, I was ready with a 700 plus credit score, LLCs in place for two plus two, two plus years. And I was one of the, I want to see the perfect client, zero inquiries. I was seasoned and ready to go. And once you have that, and I was also disciplined. I don't live a luxurious lifestyle. I just hang out with my kids. Um, so that discipline 
combination com- combined with the opportunity and just being able to find deals with a cheaper rate it just it really just sort of took me off um and that's why i was eating all the meetings up i was learning something new every every wednesday i'm like okay great i got another contractor i got this play here now i can use the points now i can do this and it was just a big snowball effect so i was in real estate university everybody was having you know a good time like this is everything that i need to change my life and i'm good you know i'm proof that it, it does um but with business credit you can do a lot of different things um even today i went through a second round funding with i'm running the business is expensive websites all the back end things that you really have to do can cost to run it effectively um so i think that when used correctly it's such a powerful tool now there's a lot of misinformation out there but used correctly combined with real estate the right way oh man it's you're almost unstoppable you feel like you could be almost unstoppable at times you do <laughs> that's the truth <laughs> that is the truth I, I i i did a little bit of research um just around this channel and also like um on instagram to find out where people are struggling with and i had to really ask myself like a while ago i used to get really frustrated when people ask questions i'm like yo i made so many videos i've we talked about this in Mastermind, and I realized that it's, it's just so much content and so much stuff. Like you, when we were in person, you were coming every week. It's different now, right? You competing, we're competing with TikTok, right? Like you can yeah. be looking at BCS or you can be doing TikTok, or you might be doing both and you're missing it. So yeah. even though we have so much information around it, we have so many masterminds that business credit question is a question that so many people have. And I, I just like the fact that you, you did that. And I wanted just to kind of walk through the logistics of it. Cause I think people hear about it and then still get in, intimidated when it's like, Oh my God, business credit. And then they're like, Oh, I don't know what to do. Oh so God, I'm, I'm glad to clarify that. Yeah. And then in managing, um, managing your personal credit, and I also took another, I took a detailed course on business credit as well um, last January to get further information on how to do it. So I love Marcus, but when you learn how to do your own business credit funding, that's another level to it. So now you don't have to pay the 8% and you can do it on at your leisure. Um, and with social media it helps where we're not walking into the bank, talking to the teller, we're walking in talking to the manager or some of these smaller banks, the presidents and CEOs. So our conversations are different. Our application process is different. And our funding is different. We're not asking for $10,000 anymore. We're asking for 100 and up. And you better give it to me because I know we. if you want my business, then that's where we're at. And when you combine that, like I said, when you are still doing the hard work, looking for deals, still on deal hunting every Tuesday, um, and just staying hungry at the same time is it's a powerful it's a powerful tool but with business credit make sure your personal things are in line and the education is out there to do the right thing with it so let me ask you a question um before i ask you this question i got a little floss a little bit um my my videographer was here he was recording some co- content and i got a phone call from one of the banks that i bank with and uh the woman <laughs> called me basically she sent she told me about a new product and i didn't submit the application yet she called me like, can you submit the application, please? And I feel like to say, like, that's where you want to be at when the banker's calling you, begging you to submit the application so he can give you a new line. Right. So I just, I'm just, I'm just flossing a little bit. But let me just ask you this question. You said that a lot of people, there's a lot of misinformation out there. What do you think is the biggest, most egregious misinformation that you've heard about business credit? The thing that I found about business credit, uh, maybe misinformation, is people are using it, but they don't actually have a legitimate business. So they have you can submit the right documents. But if you're not running a business, actually making a profit, doing transactions, then it makes it tougher. Now you have to manufacture spending or do certain things to get points that I I don't look down upon it. But it's something that I wouldn't do. Like we could spend one hundred thousand dollars in a month just by working rehabs drywall, you know, things, but other people may have to go and do alternative spending to run up points or to get things back. Um, 
if that makes sense. I don't want to go too deep into it because I don't want to seem like I'm coming down on anybody. But no, me, I, just, I know. Yeah, it's tough because I, I yeah, if I, you want a legit business with legit transactions, then it's the best thing in the world. But you can easily manipulate the system to be in your favor, but it's not really helping you because you're don't if you don't have a business, you're just uh, more so floss for Instagram and stuff like that. Okay. How about All right. I just like to demystify because sometimes I do see stuff and I don't like you said, I don't I don't want to I'll be wanting to be like, now what? Huh? <laughs> so like, I gotta remember to keep the main thing on Instagram. I'm here to make money, not to get in Instagram, not to get in DM yeah. fights with people because I've done that. <laughs> be like, how did I get in DM fights with this person? DM so fights, you showing me in the wrong people. comment section going in. Like that is wrong. You cannot do that. <laughs> and I mean, being fights with people when I look on their page and they sleep in the mattress in the grandmama basement. <laughs> Why am I fighting with you? <laughs> and you sleep in the mattress in your grandmama basement. Because we had time that day. It's like, I got time today. Let's go. Like, this is wrong. And you're not going to put it out there. But yeah, the DM, you, DM fights, they can be fun sometimes. <laughs> but yes, I do the same thing. Like, look, that's wrong. You're teaching the wrong thing. And your followers are going to, you're going to lead people down the wrong path. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> I had to promise myself not to do it no more, man. <laughs> I still okay, do it. If I got right. time, it's okay. Don't nobody else, as long as they don't screenshot the fight, then I ain't worried about it. <laughs> That's the thing. I know you know they will screenshot the fight. That's why. <laughs> it's in somebody else's group group chat. I don't mind, but don't make it public because then we gotta it didn't take it to the next level. <laughs> I, you know, you made me feel so much better because I literally struggle <laughs> with this stuff. <laughs> Oh. I didn't know it was other people out there. I just thought everybody was just like, I don't care. I'm like, no, yeah. I'm passionate. Stop telling these people. Yeah, you, you tell these people to commit fraud and stop doing it. This is, let me tell you the one that I, and that I, and I'm only saying this not to talk trash about anybody. I'm saying this because someone has heard this and they have it in their arsenal. One of y'all, at least one of y'all is about to do this. So I'm going to tell you the one that I found that the most egregious. Get business, get a get business, get a business, start an LLC, get business credit because there are banks that will give you business credit, even if you don't have any income yet. It's a new business. Get do that, take that money that you get, pay for whatever it is that you pay for, and then file bankruptcy on this LLC. Close the LLC. Yeah, yeah the biggest one is like do the with your student loans because you can't file um Bankruptcy on your student loan. So that's what that's yeah, that's the that's the that's my fight right there. Like stop. Yeah, I don't I that one, yeah. Okay, all right, let's just go. Yeah, that's so we're on the same page. Like, like don't do that because you're just setting yourself up. You might get away with you may not, but don't just don't do that. Yeah, no, you're better it's off not that, just it, here's the thing, right? Again, for people who think that it's sweet, like, okay, you get bit, like people are also marketing, hey, you get business credit. And because let's say you do get business credit and you're not a personal guarantor, let's say that happens, right? And they're promoting it as if you have less liability. I mean, you have less responsibility to pay it back. And that's is. It's easy to make. It's easier than you think to make money out here, and with any business, you could start a drop shipping business with the, with, the, with, the, with the business. Yeah, it's like if you focus on the right thing, it's a little bit. It may seem like it's more work to do it, not the right way, but to actually start a real business. But it's a system to it, and the more work you put into it, you do it the right way, it'll take you a lot further than um, maybe doing some of the other plays with the bankruptcy and things like that. All right, so guys, make sure you load your questions in the Q&A section. So, all right, Lorenzo, let's talk about um, some of the, some of your buying criteria. That year when you bought eight properties in a year. Well, is that has that been your biggest year in terms of how many properties you bought at a given time in, in a given year? You're looking like, heck no. <laughs> no, I had, a, I had a really decent year last year as well. I think last year was like almost 12, maybe 14, but... I, I mentally, I told myself I wasn't going to count. I was going to just keep grinding until I turned 40. And then I was going to see where I'm at. And if I want to keep going, if I want to stop. So talk us through. So last year you did 12, 12 to 14 or whatever. 
talk us through the buying criteria and then also how you managed all the work, like any tools for the trade in terms of that's a lot of work and a lot of crews. How did you manage all of that work? And also by still making sure you, you got good deals. Now my buying criteria was really based on zip codes. I took a small area. Um, I had eight zip codes and in my, I don't have it in my office now, but I had it broken down on what each zip code, the buying criteria was. And specifically, it was really $50,000 or less for a three-bedroom house that was 1,200 square feet. And as the ARV started to increase, my um, my price started to increase. So maybe it was 50, then it started to be 65, 75, and anything that I could do with $50,000 in work. So I had a, a nice handshake deal with a contractor where his he was going to fix up all the house for $30,000. So I just had to manage the materials. Some of the materials were 20, some of them were 30. So we were in and out. If you're buying it for 50, I could easily manage that. And we were, he was in and out in 30 days. And I can say this now, but I wasn't necessarily pulling permits. We were just, we were just getting right to it. Like, look, we're buying this on the first. We're getting out of here at the end of the month. Um, and from here, you're going to be able to go to this house. So he was making a lot of money. Everybody was happy. Um, one of the best things that happened to me was when his crew split. So his guys left, and the first person that they called was me. So instead of having one crew, then I had two. <laughs> and they already knew how we worked. So now I had to double up on how many houses I purchased to keep everybody busy. And that was how I was able to do it. So some of them, they were in 60 days, but we were in and out. And by me managing the properties myself, I had a list of people, still have a list of people who want to rent. I just picked the person at the top of the list, put them in, in, out. Um, it got, it can get hectic at times. It got to the point where I had to quit my job because I couldn't manage everything. But having a system in place, we got a 28 point system that we use. Um, all of my houses for a certain amount of years, they all look the exact same. We took the materials from one house to the next. And by being in the same zip codes, the West Philly and Southwest area, we're not taking the materials far. It's like, look, take the drywall over here and finish. Take the tile over here and finish. And just use, I had um, like almost an inbox of item numbers for Amazon, Lowe's, and we would just go plug and play. It was all a system. It wasn't, I took a lot of the emotion out. We just had to actually put the work in. And I, my job was really to find the deals, find the deal and keep everybody busy. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So many questions that you just gave, like uh, the 28 points. Talk to me about the 28 points. The 28, it was similar. You touched, I saw you did a YouTube video where I think your video, I think yours might've been 20 or 21 steps, but I have a few oh, more. You mean where, the order of a rehab? An order of a rehab. Yep. Okay. And I don't skip the steps. I go straight down the list. Like where are we at? We had the finish frame. I'm not jumping ahead and doing anything else at the finish frame. We're going to insulate, you know, and I'm sticking straight to this script. And everybody knows exactly where we're at and exactly where you're coming in. Um, got the system on what the order, when to order materials. So nobody's waiting. We don't have um, a lapse of work. And that was the key point where everybody at least knows how we work and the quality mm -hmm. of work that we want. So the steps, I don't I forget, I think yours might have been 20 or 21, but mine is 28. And it's, so, just, all right, all right, all right, it's so crazy. I'm going to say this and then we can, we can probably compare where you, what you have versus what I don't have. Um, so I made that video and I was like, this is going to go viral because it was a game changer for me. So let me give everybody a little bit of context. I made a video that listed out the order of a rehab for me. And I think for a lot of people, that be y'all biggest struggle and y'all don't even know that's y'all biggest struggle. When it when it was explained to me, I was like, mm, I can, you can do it as long as you know the order. You can find everybody on Yelp. <laughs> like, for real, for real. So you really have no issue. You There is no mystery around the rehab process. If you know the order in which you're supposed to go, you can literally Google everybody else. That's it. 
You don't have to do, you don't have to know anything other than the order. That's it. And Lorenzo just clarified that for me. So I said, I'm going to make this video. It's going to go viral. This is a. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, eh. it was was like <laughs> <laughs> it's the hidden gems. It's some of the stuff is right in front of them. They just, I don't know. I don't know either. Oh, just giving out free information that nobody wants to share with you. They want to tell you like, yo, buy my course for seventy five thousand right. dollars, and I'm going to give, and I'll give you, and they give you that, and then you be like, oh. and I'm like, I just take a screenshot, and then <laughs> take a screenshot, like it, save it to your faves, so that six months when you finally get in that first property, you could just be like, Nikki, you know exactly. Okay, okay. no, I'm here. Step number two, you know, step number. <laughs> And you name it. and you you actually number it. So when we number, like, nah, where are we at? We at number 14. Your, your team, your job is coming up in about two weeks. And you'll know exactly when they're you can tell them you're gonna be already right, know. We got you February 5th. That's when you're coming in. I love that. Okay. And so that's important because it, this is something I'm learning from you right now. Like, I normally don't tell everybody the steps, right? I usually have a project manager that handles it. I just make sure he stays according to the steps. But I know like the subs that I do talk to, I don't tell them that, but I do that with my regular business where I try to tell everybody so that they know where they fit in the wheel. Right. Even though, and it's important. I realize how important it is in that business. I don't, I never thought about applying it to being a developer because it's important for my other staff to know like, Hey guys, I know this has nothing to do with you, but this is what I'm doing over here. Or this is what Susie is working on. This is just everybody know where, where they are, where we stand. So you understand how important or unimportant your job or task is. Right. And so um, I say that great to actually tell people where you are in the cog and why you can't get in here or why you need to be here on this day. Right. So that they're not confused. And let them know um, the consequences if they can't finish on time. It's like, look, I'm giving you a week. If you are not finished by Monday at 8 o'clock, it's going to be an entirely other crew in here working, and you are going to have to work around them. So you got this house to yourself. Whatever you do, for 8 o'clock on Monday, somebody else is starting. And if you think I'm playing a game, you know, you try to do some plumbing with uh, 10, 10 HVAC guys running around because you decided to take an extra couple of days. It's going to be hard, but you can only, you can only blame yourself. Um, Rob said the order, in refer, reference to knowing the orders, he said, I did a rehab with my cheap crew off the order flow. I know that's yeah. right, Rob. That's all, that's all you need to know. I mean, as you get better, you start button up some other things, but that's once right. you got that, you good. Um, all right. It was another question I had. Guys, please post your questions in here. Um, in the chat, Rob, Rosie, it's a lot of y'all in here. Thank y'all for coming today. I love it. It's popping today. All your friends is here. <laughs> Albert, Mike, Alyssa, George, y'all got any questions? Chrissy, hey, Chrissy Boo. Um, y'all got any questions? Please ask Lorenzo. It was something well, see, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm working on that apartment home. building that uh, you gave me. And that's going to be, that's another reason why I'm trying to slow down. I'm going to finish the single families and the, the duplexes and focus on that because I don't, no, I think my step system will work with it, but it's a lot of other steps that got thrown at me in the middle of it. <laughs> and I don't want to necessarily mess that up. So it's just. So it's the, the, it, it, what ended up happening, that deal was meant for you to have. What ended up happening, um, the other deal I told you I was going to do, I didn't end up doing it. <gasps> so l yeah. let me give everybody a little bit of a, a backstory, right? So um, it was two quads that I was um, that I wanted, right? One of the quads, I was like, okay, I'm going to have Jabbar go and look at. Jabbar went and looked at it and ran into Lorenzo at like Home Depot or Lowe's or something. Where he was at Lowe's right down the street. <laughs> so he was like, yeah, they ran into each other at Lowe's. And he was like, Lorenzo was like, yeah, I'm on my way to look at that deal. <laughs> so I'm like, Lorenzo was looking, considering buying a deal because Jabbar, I was about to put the offer in and tell Jabbar, tell everybody, shut it down. <laughs> So I was like, Lorenzo was looking at for real. And then, mind you, I'm thinking, looking at the other deal, the other quad. And I was like, you know what? I can't one thing, especially my members that's been members from a long time ago. It, it be, I have to be very mindful of conflicts of interest. I'm not trying to get in a bidding war with one of our members. 
And so I very well could have been like, that run down. What's up? Now, I don't know what he would have said. He might we, he might have had the, the, you know, the inner beast come out. But I was like, you know what? I'm not going to get into a bidding war with Lorenzo on this. Let me ask, let me tell Lorenzo he can have his. I got this other deal. To be honest, it would have been a stretch because the other deal was in Germantown and that was in West Philly. Okay. And then I had some other small ones, single families going on. It just would have been a lot of people running around. And I I did, I don't know if I would have been able to su- support that level of crew yet. It would have right. been all experimental. So I was like, let me just let Lorenzo get this one. So I called Lorenzo and was like, listen, I just want you to know <laughs> that I'm not going to go for it. You got it. And then I had to, it was a couple of things that you didn't know too about it. Yeah, I he was like, make it a four. It's not a tri- It's not a triplex. Make it a quad. So I did that before. Um, I, I went to the settlement table. I made it a quad before then. So, all right, that's what's up. Yeah, because... Um, it was being sold as a triplex, but the numbers, like when you ran, when I ran the numbers, it, it's not, it, that was what made it such a juicy deal. The seller, the wholesaler was marketing it as a triplex. And I'm like, right. sure, I'll buy it. <laughs> Almost sight unseen because you don't know that this is really a quad <laughs> and the numbers are better. Right. And so I was like, <laughs> Lorenzo, get this. Don't, don't tell nobody, but this, this use this as a quad the numbers are juicier and this is why da, 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 da. and then so with the other one the lot size was too small i it had the size to convert to a quad but the lot the lot width was too small and it was okay. the it, it was just diminishing deal and i was like i'm not fighting with no deals fine and then yeah. what made it even worse is the wholesaler had it under contract i put the um the emd down the wholesaler i mean the title company needed like a death certificate from the seller and the seller was taking a long time to get it to them. And then we moved way out of contract. Um, they never did it. So the wholesaler just gave me, told the title company to release my money. Okay. So it's okay. I'm honestly, I'm right now. I am. I, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. I thought I'm you fine. just got like four houses under contract. I do, and, they're all single, and they're all single families, but you know, okay. I don't really do multis, but the reason is because a lot of them are like, Two of them are lipsticks on a pig. One of them is a um is turnkey, and another one is a full gut. But it is a two thousand square foot property in Maniac. I'm getting it for two hundred, and the ARVs are six fifty with a garage. That might be my Philly. I might do Airbnb, and then it'll be my Philly house when we finally come back to Philly. Because I don't mind staying, and it's literally one block from Main Street. Yeah, you could put what maybe two hundred is your rehab budget if you. On the high side, my I told my guy, he said he could stay within a hundred. He said, maybe he said, put like maybe 20 on it because you know you like nice stuff. So 120. Okay. So if I'm all in at 320 and the ARV is 600, that's mm. a six. I saw 650, a strong 650, and it was smaller mm. than my property. Yeah, yeah, I lived in Roxborough for a long time. So yeah, those numbers is crazy. And it's a really good area. That's one of the still one of the good areas to live in in Philadelphia. It is because guess what? You got Main Street right there, which is very cute food, all that. And then if you want to get out the city, it's just right there. Right there. <laughs> you know, 76. I'm going. I don't have to go to where the rest of it. <laughs> the and you can go both the ways. You can go out the city or you could be right downtown in 20 minutes. So, and uh, you got your son now. You're going to be looking at different schools. They have some of the better schools too in that area. If you can get in that zip code, you're good. We shall see. Um, all right. So Rosie wants to know how, that's a good question. How did you make that property into a quad before you got to the closing table? I tried to do that. And it was like, the deed needs to be recorded in your name before we actually change the use. So how did you do it? Um, I believe she spoke on your platform before I use a uh, Paulette Philly expediters. Mm-hmm. So she handles all of our permits, how she did it. I, I don't know, but I sent her all of my documentations and I had, um, I had everything back that was owned as a four unit legally in the state of Phil- in the city of Philadelphia in about 72 hours, something like that. It took me three days. Shout out to Paulette. She's a BTS member as well. Shout yeah, out to so, her. That's awesome. So, yeah. So that's about the relationship that I have because I've been using her to pull all my permits and do uh, single family conversions and things like that. So with her, I left my deposit down. I would not have actually closed if she didn't turn it into a four unit before I bought the house and my hard money lender actually required me to get that to him. So I submitted that with my paperwork. Yeah. 
Yes. Okay. All right. So now y'all loading your questions in right now. Um, hold on, Maxine. What happened to your question? Where's your question? Y'all got now. See, I'll be getting the, the conversation juicy and then y'all just be uh hopping in. Um, what are your thoughts about doing larger commercial deals? I love the larger commercial deals. Uh last year we did do a I don't know if it's considered it is considered commercial, but a 26 unit for 1.8 million. And the numbers on that is it's it's through the roof because it appraised for 2.5. So you came in with almost seven hundred thousand dollars in equity. Um this was one of my partner's deals, but I was able to be the agent and I manage the property. And I'm looking at all the, the money that's coming in, it's bringing in almost is netting almost fourteen thousand dollars a month. So with that, I think that's another reason why I'm sort of slowing down because I would love to jump into the larger commercial deals. When you combine that with a seasoned LLC and business credit, those sort of deals will be open open up to you. Um, so I think that's the way to go. If you want to skip some steps in the rehab cycle, come straight to large commercial deals, buy some eight to 10, 12 unit apartment buildings. And I think you'll you'll definitely see the, the profits. I love it. That's that's them some beautiful numbers right there. Okay, let's get to the next question. When buying, what criteria in a property do you look for in turnkeys? And what do you renovate in turnkeys to make that rent ready? With the turnkeys, um, I really, or maybe lips, lipsticks or turnkeys? Um, I'm with, that's in between, in anywhere from in lipstick between. to turnkey. I really like to, I'll change small things, the faucets, knobs, one of the big paint. One of the bigger things I always, I have a cheaper floor installer, so I really like to put down new floors. I've had some poor appraisals come back because I thought that, well, they love this old original hardwood floors. Well, I like it, but the appraiser didn't necessarily see the same um, eye to eye on it. So I would give them new floors. And if I could change the lighting, make it nice and bright. Uh, and I like to use gold. Do I did a little bit of research on my demographics. If it's going to be a certain demographic, I use certain colors. So gold stands out, gold faucets, gold, everything in the bathroom. And you'll be surprised. You can actually get a, a little bit of a higher rent. Lorenzo said, 40-year-old black women like gold. Yes. <laughs> Black people, was grinding, right? black people like gold. So when they see gold, it, it works. So if I'm if I'm going to have an African American or black end buyer, I do put gold in the house somewhere, either in the kitchen and in the bathroom. Uh, all right, here's Aisha. Here's my um, here's my criteria for turkeys. I was reading between the lines. I saw the smirk on your face, Lorenzo. <laughs> Um, all right. So here's my, here's my, my, my criteria for turnkeys. Um, what defines if something is a turnkey or lipstick on a pig or not is the mechanicals. HVAC is a trillion dollars right now. That's my biggest question is what's going on with the HVAC. Anything that I buy, I want to put forced air and heat in it. One, it will keep a happier tenant. And two, um, nobody's going to call you about any issues with it. They shouldn't. So it needs to, if it's, I won't even consider it turnkey or rent ready if it does not have forced air or forced heat in it. It could be everything else nice and it's got that. That might be a lipstick on a pig depending on the number. I'm just not going to analyze it the same because it's just so much of a headache and it's so expensive. Um, elect electrical to plumbing as well. Um but that's really where I start from. That's what I look at. Those are the things that cost the most money. Then obviously flooring and um, kitchens and bathrooms. No matter what, whether you you can have HVAC. I mean, you rarely ever see anything like this. But you have brand new HVAC, electrical plumbing, um, brand new floorings. If that kitchen, that bathroom don't look cute. Right. <laughs> if it don't look cute. The value of everything else drops about fifty percent. <laughs> so I mean, and, and it is can, it can be expensive. The cost of the tiling and um, 
you know, countertops and, and, and counters and cabinets, all that stuff is, is going up as well. So like the mechanicals, bathrooms, kitchen floors, those are the things that really go into the meat and potatoes of whether something is a turnkey or being a lipstick on a pig. Everything else, paint, trim is important, doors, windows, that stuff can be massaged and put keep, keep that in, you know, you might right. be able to keep it in there. <laughs> it's important, but like, it's not a headache like everything else. And you can get them done a little bit easier. Hopefully that answers your question, Aisha. I didn't answer it directly, but I gave you some criteria for you to look at. I think the biggest thing that she wants to look for is she needs to go and make sure the mechanicals work. If the mechanicals work, then you got yourself a lipstick. If they don't, you got yourself a headache. Yeah, but even if they do work and it's radiator heat and it's old plumbing, guess what they're going to be doing? Calling you every darn week, every month. My, I got a leak. My stack broke. I got, you know, my electric outlets are going out because you got some knob and tube hidden somewhere in there. So, yeah, it makes it tough. Don't call me. <laughs> Don't call me at all. <laughs> all right. So I'm going to go to my 28 step. I mean, my 20 step. And then Lorenzo can tell us, somebody asked me this. Lorenzo can tell us where, where what he got in there that I don't have in mind. Um, let me go to it. Let me pull mine up. Well, I could go mine on the top of my head. All right. All right. I'm letting it, the video play so I can screenshot it. All right. So. So I can start off. I, the first one is you want to make sure you got your plans because mine is based off of mm -hmm. full gut. So mm -hmm. the very first thing you want to make sure you have your plans. Uh, I'm a big fan of Jane. Jane does a great job. She can be real, real responsive. And if you That's more information you give her, the better you can help her do her job. Uh, second, the next three steps are setting up the utilities. Whether it's Pico, um, I always start with Pico, PGW, then the water department. Pico, you can make a phone call, PGW, same, or you can do them online. The water department is actually done uh, at the closing table. However, I like to send them an email to make sure that they have my correct email address and I want the bill sent to a certain place. Um, those are my first four. I don't know if you got yours now. I can let you go. I do. I, I didn't have the um, utilities in there. And you know what? I never really thought about it till you said that. I do be fumbling through my utilities like, oh, I got to do that. I need to have that in there. So right. I, I, I pre-development is for me like plans, permits, all of that. That's all in one thing. But I do always every time be fumbling through like, oh, shoot, I forgot. OK, tell my my VA, like, hurry up, can you, do, uh, you know, or right. I got to. I got two VAs technically. One of them handle that type of stuff. And so, like, I just always fumble through it. Yeah, so that's my, right after the closing table, I'll go, one of my big things, I sit down for an hour, set up all the utilities before we do anything else. And then um, the first step should be, the first actual step in the house should be the demo. Mm -hmm. And... Oh. I'm trying to pull my thing up so we can um, pull it up on the screen. Um, while you're talking, I'm pull, trying to All right, pull I'll, I'll keep going. Yeah, from the demo, I move on to any masonry work. So if I have to secure any foundation, uh, foundational issues, that's where I'm going to see. make sure the house isn't falling down. I bring them in and just secure everything. So from there, after that's completed, I move on to my, it's actually called a framing rough in a way. Yep. Yeah. Framing rough. So you got a frame. So, so, so you do your, your framing before you do the roof. I have on my, my thing. Like if, if there is the roof is not leaking, I do the roof after the mechanicals. Why? And the, the reason why is because my windows are going to be put in during the framing. Now mm -hmm. my plumber is going to put holes in the roof when mm -hmm. he's venting everything out. So I'm going to have to bring the roofer back anyway. So if I can bring, if the roof isn't leaking, I could bring the roofer after the fight, the mechanicals are done. He's securing everything and he's capping the windows. So I'm doing all that 
at that phase siding uh window capping roof secure the building on the outside at that point because nobody else is going to you better not put any more holes in this roof at all after the um your rough end is done and you know what this is a personal preference i'm not mad at that because i will tell you i have had issues where the roofer got to come back and all of that and then also the capping of the windows that's always a thing that's got to be jigsawed in there yeah. so i'm not mad at that but i'll tell you i always do this because i have <laughs> i i was scorned one time i so kim was doing jump start and he had already done it when we had started and then we met and he's like listen i want you to go i want you to audit the program i just want you to go through it so i went through the program and one of their students they had um they on the day they did like a tour so the previous student lets people come in and look at the house and this house was being done it was beautiful gorgeous and i mean you know in terms of it was just framing up i think and they had put some mechanicals in and on the third floor they they hadn't done the roof yet and the mechanicals was in and there was a big hole and it was about to rain that night and so every time i think about the roof i think visually to myself <laughs> oh my god it's going to rain and guess what ended up happening they also it was a they did their whole thing out of order and then somebody had ended up breaking in and stealing all the mechanicals and all this so the the whole property just wasn't secure altogether right. so i think in my mind the roof something's going to happen to the roof yeah and then it's going to get damaged all my stuff and i'm going to be like ah. but and i'm not mad at you that's, that's possible that's why i have it uh it's flexible because if the roof is actually um damaged then i'll do it a lot sooner but to make it a one-stop shop that's what I, yeah that's why i moved it but um i have those same fears like if you put your electrical wires in your your insulation everything could be ruined by you not doing the roof on time your subfloor everything thanks okay so then so you said mason reads and you see you 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 start your hvac plumbing what else what's your next step well yeah i do a uh, rough plumbing rough hvac and rough electric in that in that order um and then i do the framing final and after that that's when i do the roof um insulation after the insulation that's when um we straight up drywall and then after we drywall it's a party after that it so, is hey look you get in there you prime paint my floor and tile guys they actually work together at the same time like look y'all gonna have to get along however y'all work it out um so they're in there simultaneously and then after that i'm bringing in all the mechanical guys can come back hey y'all finish up um but the exact order is i go back in the same order the plumber comes back hvac electrical but um aside they can actually all work together everybody has a week to get their stuff together you know like look y'all come back february 5th and knock all this out and while we're doing that we're doing a trim um a couple things i had in there is after that that's when i start the pre-market um pre-market to me is real important because you can have your unit sold rented before it ever hits the market just by you taking a couple pictures and videos um then you got your your final paint your staging and then your then i'm done after that pretty much <laughs> similar 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 orders so here's my order take a screenshot everyone and um Lorenzo, if you can, what we'll do is um, if you can send your order to mm -hmm. Irish or or um, Alea, and then we'll see how we can get it out to everybody. Okay. You can do it your own way. Either way, they're both good orders. Um, okay. Yeah, you got your you got your appliances. I'm sort of bring my appliances in with um, they kind of go in almost with the cabinets. I always do it last. It just this is always what happens. Yeah. Um, it's all kitchens call for the granite. It's, it's all around the same time. Honestly, when you get to this 16 through 20, a lot of that stuff is around the same time. Right. And you yeah. can be in and out in about three weeks. To me. So like everybody get, if as long as you're as the the actual project manager, have everything inside, get it in and get out. 
I aspire, man. I think I probably I I will need to come back home or be in the same city for that. I know people be doing all type of. I I leave a room for Nicole live on a different coast. <laughs> We gotta get over on her a little bit. I don't be I, I don't be tripping about that. I just I really don't. And that's all right. As long as y'all stay within the budget, y'all answer my phone calls, y'all be honest, y'all good people, y'all stick with me. I take I'm I'm three thousand miles away. No, I'm not gonna come and punch you in the eye like I would yeah. if I was there. Nobody I feel like taking the flight to just to check or make sure they're showing up at work every day. Like no. send me some pictures and I'll be okay. <laughs> right. All right. So next question. What are the basic property needs to be Section 8? I don't do Section 8, so Lorenzo is the king. With Section 8, uh, you want to be aware of what commonly fails, and that's going to be the first off is making sure all of your outlets are grounded. Um, that's the I found that's the biggest thing where they'll fail you. It could be 40 outlets in the house, and if you have one that's not grounded, it's going to take you two weeks to get it, you know, till they come back out. Um with Section 8, they really want to make sure the property is safe and secure. And when it comes to the inspection, though, outlets, plumbing, similar to how everything we just mentioned, you want to make sure you do your research and make sure everything works. Don't get taken off guard by them turning the stove on and you haven't turned, you never turned the stove on, it doesn't work. Or testing your heat out, make sure the heat actually works in every room, your windows locked, doors locked. It seems very simple. But you want to make sure that if you do your own research, you'll find that, okay, this master bedroom door does not lock and the window doesn't work. So you make those repairs. Um, it's not complicated, but they will fail you for, it may seem like something small, but any one infraction, you're not going to pass. Um, are you investing outside of Philly? For me, no. What about you? Not, no. I don't know. I can't get over the taxes and I haven't been able to make the numbers work. But I would love to. I would love to invest outside of uh, Philly, but I haven't been able to really. The taxes always throws off the cash flow for me. I'm like, I'm not making any money on this. And, for, and by that, he was talking about the surrounding counties. Yeah. Um, and there, there are people here who are investing in a whole other states. Um, for me, honestly, I am very, very, very. Um, I am strongly considering investing in Memphis. Um, I just haven't done, I don't, I'm, it, it's just a little making me a little nervous. And plus I got some other things I want to do. And so I'm just not super locked in, but I'm, I'm heavily considering it. Uh, okay. We got the, the Rosie answered that question. Um, wait, Mike said, what's the discount code for your hundred thousand dollar membership? You got a hundred thousand dollar membership, Lorenzo, or Mike being funny? Mike is, it's, uh, it's, it's 10,000. But I'm not even trying. I don't even come in here to sell anything. I'm just here to bust it up. We good. No. <laughs> Mike, Mike just trying to uh, bust chops. Okay. Uh, Lorenzo, I'm trying to restart flips this year. I spoke with the GC yesterday and he said he can look at a property, then have a proposal put together within 48 hours. He said, continue. Okay. okay. Congratulations. Oh, he said, if I identify a property, should I put it under contract first or just take the GC with me from the beginning to minimize the time frame between, between seeing it and putting an offer in? Put your offer in, get your offer accepted, and see if you can get 72 hours before you have to leave your deposit. And during those 72 hours, you got a lot of work to do to find before you put your money on the table. Typically, what I do, Rob, is um, I in as you develop these relationship with these um, wholesalers, it's just a kind of a normal conversation. So actually, this happened to me. Wholesaler sent me a deal. I looked at it tentatively. And I go through my, I got a list like, okay, this cost this, this cost this. Okay. I'm looking at the pictures. Okay. This need that, this need that. And I'll put numbers in. Right. And I always assume that whatever it is, is full, right. Not partial, whatever that line item is. So I came back to the wholesaler and was like, Hey, I'm running my numbers preliminarily. And I always use language like that. I'm running my numbers preliminarily. This is my counter offer. They accepted. I said, okay, listen, I'm letting you know right now. I want to have my guy go through it there. I'm letting you know right now, like that's the number I would do it at. I just, is it okay if I have my guy go through it? They know the game, right? You do have some wholesalers that's going to be like, oh, 
And guess what? I don't do business with you because a lot of times they be like really out here scheming and scamming. I can tell you stories. Collect the deposits. Don't do it. Never close. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Make a whole business out of collecting deposits and not selling any property. Not selling any property. Just collecting your five thousand. Just collecting deposits. Okay. It's non refundable. <laughs> Right. So most wholesalers will understand like, all right, y'all verbally accept it, but just tell him like, listen, I want to have my guy go through this to verify it. So my guy went through it. His number was a higher number. So I called him like, listen, I'm going to pass on this deal. This is what, this is why. And we had a whole conversation because he also had his comps way higher. I'm like, oh, you, you going 3.3 miles out for comps? There's a comp on the block. That's like I, the, the appraiser is not going to overlook a comp on the block that's 30,000 less than what you're telling me the 1.3 miles away is. Like, you know, so we had a whole, a very good conversation where I was helping him to understand. I said, this doesn't mean that your property won't sell where you want it to sell at because guess what? There are some investors out there. They not BTS members. So they don't know stuff. So you'll probably sell it where you wanted to sell it out, but I can't do it there because this is the number and this is what it is. And so I say all that to say to you, Rob, run your numbers, have a good idea of what each line item is. Look at the pictures, look at the property yourself and then say, hey, this is the number I'm willing to do it at. This, I just want to have my contractor go through it one more time. And most 99% of the time they will they will understand. They know you, the, the buyer isn't, you know, they're going to have some contractors work on the project. So, yes. Um, okay. Next question. Asking because if I'm looking at multiple properties, how do you minimize cost of GC? There we go. We just answered it. Miss um, <laughs> Maxine said, I have gold finishes. <laughs> See? <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, all right. <laughs> Uh, do you handle other properties besides Section 8, like other programs? Great question, Nicole. I have not. I've, I've tried other programs like HUD VASH, which is a part of Section 8, rapid rehousing. I haven't had a lot of success with some of them. So not that they, I'm sure that they do work, but my um, interactions with some of those programs, they have not been pleasant. But I have great. Good. No, I was going to say, I have a great relationship with rapid rehousing people. Okay. Um I got rapid rehousing and I got, um, what's the other one? Oh man. Covenant house. Oh, they, so you've been, I distinctly remember you at the mastermind when the, the, we did a mastermind in person where the woman spoke for half and then Jabbar spoke at the other half. It was one of the times that we had like a double header. Cause yeah, she I remember, I remember that. And I remember calling them up, but for some reason I just couldn't connect the dots. Because rapid rehousing, they've been calling me, but covenant house, I couldn't. Something happened where I was like, I'm just gonna do section eight. I feel, I feel bad. They usually uh, they usually pay higher. I have had it's been good so far. Okay. Um Rob Diaz, what are some reliable resources for rental rate? I use the section eight. Um, you said what rent a meter? <laughs> yeah, rent a rent a meter is number one, and if you're gonna do section eight. They have a scale of what you can get for each property. It's on their the PHA website. So between those two, you can decide if you want to do a, a market rent it, market rent tenant or you want to do Section Eight. But rental meter is hands down, and they're pretty accurate. I love um, rental meter. It's a great resource. Okay, Kimberly, do you recommend staging properties? Have you seen a big difference when you don't? Great question, Kim. I have. Um, we stayed the last few properties and the last one, we got almost $300 more in rent. So the market rate is $1,300. We staged it, got $1,600, and it was a matter of five days. So that $36 extra $100 a month can go a long way. You're talking like $10,000 in the span of three years just by staging the property. But staging can be expensive. It can be anywhere from four to six thousand dollars depending on the level that you want so if you can somehow manage to cut down the scale in a bit on the price and still get your point across i, re I strongly recommend it because you're going to see a profit on your monthly rental rate as well as on your appraisal if you can get it appraised while it's still staged instead of them renting it being in there 
I got a um I got a plug for y'all and you too, Lorenzo. I feel like I told you this. Casa one for staging. So it's hot fire. So what you do is you go onto their website. <laughs> you go onto their website, you rent the furniture for they can do it as little as one month. They have like room packages that you can put together or you can get individual items. It's dumb cheap. And only thing you got to do is put the sheets on it. And I got a bunch of stuff at the office back home. Mm -hmm. So whereas though, it's like, all right, just rent the furniture. Spend, I don't know, seven, eight hundred. It's not a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Put the furniture in there and then just have some sheets and stuff that you, and pillows and stuff that you rotate right. and move it to the next one. And then they, they literally do it. They drop it off. They put it together. <laughs> then you schedule it for them to come and pick it up. They disassemble it. It's like a white glove, so it's super easy. And I, yeah, I, I think you probably see the benefits of it as well. You get it rented fast. Casa one. Oh, it's Casa one. Casa one. Yeah. Anybody who wants to do um, staging, it take a little bit of work on your end, but I don't. It's not that difficult. I have um, someone from my team do it. They just okay. go and put the stuff down, and that's it. And it's really, really inexpensive. And then you only right. have to do it. We only got to do it once. Once it stays, you get your higher appraisal. You get your tenant paying more and move it on to the next one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Alyssa had a really great question. Uh, I noticed you buy fire damage homes. What should I look for and what should I stay away from? Great question. I don't want to say I love fire damage houses, but the benefit of it, you get them for a cheaper rate. Um, when you're doing a full gut rehab, we're really going to fix almost everything in the house anyway. You're going to pull your permits and the architect or the engineer, they're going to tell you everything that you have to do to fix up the house. And it takes some of the brain work and the guessing out of it. It's, you know, you bring Jane again. I'm going to drop her name a few times because she's been a big part of our team and her her team to tell you exactly what needs to be done. I'm like, all right, so I need to change this choice. And they're going to give you a report. So they'll tell you what to do. And then your job as the investor is to use whatever you visually can see to get it down for the cheaper rate, the cheaper price. Bring everything down. Look, this house is on fire. I got to change everything. Give it to me for $20,000 less and make the numbers work for you. Everyone, my mom posted Jane's information. There's her website or, and follow her. I think she's Jane Draws Plans on Instagram as well. Right. That's my girl. Um, okay. Next question. That's a great, great, great. I always shy away from fire damage house, but you just changed my whole entire mind. Yeah, um, if you cool with Grant, just call her up. She she does, she'll come in and say, Look, you gotta fix this. And uh, as long as a lot of times you don't really it's not that bad. It's stuff that you're gonna do in a full gut rehab anyway. I just think I've just blocked it out of my head, but you're right, it's not that serious. <laughs> like <laughs> it's not that serious. We just be like, we'd be on deal hunt to be like, it's fire damage next. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, like... Um, when wholesaling to protect assets, should we go with an X corp or a C corp? Sue, I don't really understand what your question is, but if Lorenzo does, then he can answer it. Uh, I only have an LLC to be honest. I didn't um dig too deep into the S corp, C corps. I feel bad. I don't feel as if I'm equipped to answer that question. I don't understand what they mean by this question. Can you, Sue, can you elaborate on the question? Just because when, what does wholesaling have to do with the, um, and protecting what assets you as a wholesaler, you're, you're not, you don't actually take on possession of the property. You are just a principal in the transaction, but you don't actually take on possession of the property. So I don't, maybe I'm, and I'm, it's probably you, not me. Just be very, very clear. It's probably me, not you. Just be very maybe clear about what you just wants to know what's better to S corp or a C corp. Maybe, uh, the wholesaling to protect an asset because, yeah, that part, you're not really, you don't have to protect any assets. You don't have any assets if you're wholesaling. Right. I, honestly, I'm restructuring everything in my life right now, working with right. um, my estate planning person and my um, a, my accountant. They, they got a whole plan. We're in the process of it. I know that everything is now going up under this trust and that's just what it is, but I'm, I'm still knee deep in this and it's a lot of work. 
uh, during the steps of the rehab, do you completely finish step A before you start on plans and secure your team materials for step B? Or do you plan that step while step A is underway? Great question, Natalie. A lot of times I do plan for step B while step A is underway because the moment that step A is finished, I have to jump into it. And the only way I could be ready is if um, <laughs> if I've started to prepare. And that's where I'll go back to business funding helps. We're not really going to sweat having a eight to ten thousand dollar material bill. You just put it on your credit card and you have it waiting for them to finish. And the moment they finish, you call and say, all right, I'm ready for you to deliver it. Um, and there are times where the materials can be sitting in the house while step A is getting completed. So there's going to be a small window where you may be doing both, but I don't actually start step B unless step A is finished, depending on um, like, you know, I can't start installation until the mechanicals are done. So some steps you can combine, but for the first like 16 steps, you just stick straight straight to it. You can't start the next one without finishing the first one. You have you have to start thinking and planning on step B when you're in step negative B, <laughs> because sometimes, right? So if you think is is the timeline is like negative B, negative A, zero A B. Okay, so I, so, <laughs> I know you do. I'm making sure everybody. I you central. I know you do. <laughs> I make it everybody, everybody else understands what I'm saying. The reason is because everything is on a the backlog. These contractors, right? Lorenzo's got his own team. Uh, most of the time, you're not going to be fortunate enough to have your own team and only them be working for you. So with that being said, you got the plan to make sure somebody got the time to come up in there. Also, a lot of these materials on backlog, right? There was one point where HVAC units was on like a six week wait. Six weeks Windows weeks. right now are six week wait. Um, cabinets for a hot second was on a nice little wait too. Right. So what you going to do? Like, okay, I'm not going to start thinking about cabinets until, and then you go to the cabinet place and they'd be like, mm, no, you're not going to get this until seven weeks. And you're just going to be a sitting duck for seven weeks. So you got to start, you got to be thinking about all that stuff beforehand. My, you know? I, the thing I would suggest, and this is something that helped me out, was having my full material list at maybe the demo phase. Once the demo phase is done, you get a clear idea of how much space you have. Matt, it's okay to map your cabinets out, know the square footage, know how much tile you need, and have that in mind. And you just actually have everything ready to order. You just press send or submit when it's time to to be ready do your research find out how long it's going to take if you know your windows are going to take six weeks you may have to order you may want to order them the day you close to keep your project on going straight so and when you're dealing with jane they actually give you the a lot of the material that floor that blueprint helps when order materials because everything you need is on the actual blueprint um, okay, next question. Jabbar, you getting questions in our QA? I don't know how that happened. But Jabbar, there's a question for you. Screenshot it. Make sure you message Rob Diaz. <laughs> oh, that is such a Jabbar He's thing. Like, I right know here, but I want to talk to Jabbar. <laughs> Where's Jabbar at? <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, bro. No problem, Mr. Diaz. <laughs> <laughs> then my mom saying hi to him like hey, <laughs> boy, this is Jabbar show you remember i used to say that we used to be a person right so just fyi i gotta get y'all over the context Jabbar is one of our founding members he's like uh i don't even want to say brother he he's like i don't know what he is he's that's 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 my family right just know that like i got his back forever he got mine and um one thing about Jabbar, when we used to get together, no matter who was speaking, Barack Obama could be speaking. Jabbar will figure out a way to get up on that stage <laughs> and start talking about anything. So in order to control our meetings, I had to kind of create this whole concept and tell Jabbar, basically like, Jabbar, this is not the Jabbar show. So we started saying Jabbar. And so sometimes the thing about the Jabbar show is you actually have to let the Jabbar show happen sometimes. <laughs> So there will be times I'll be like Jabbar. Okay, now it's the Jabbar show. <laughs> like let him go. 
But I mean, I, I appreciate Jabbar because he's a little bit older than me. So he's dropped, you know, he gives me a lot of knowledge, just even real estate and sometimes just being a man. So I, I appreciate everything that he does for me. He's an amazing human. Um, okay. So Rob said, okay, that's what I needed because I was like, how do I buy 48 to 72 hours for my GC's estimate? Yeah, just, you know, you know how to. Yeah, just say, all right, I'm going to give you the deposit on Wednesday or something like that and give yourself a little bit a couple times. Um, what are your thoughts on tax liens? On properties with tax liens? Mm hmm I have not purchased any properties with tax liens. I don't do it. I don't mess with that. Because they're a right of redemption and it gets too confusing. I'm cool. It's too me. Right now, it's deals out here that don't have tax liens. That's right. If it ever came down to it where some of the other deals dried up and we had to look at these, I, I would definitely give it a shot. Yeah, I'm not. I mean, and I know there are some people that, that that's their lane. Um, and I'm super not knocking them. I just, for me, right? Like, I think this is something else too that a lot of people don't do. You have to understand your capacity right? Like for me, I can't take on too many possibilities of things. You got to know when to say no, right? So this is how I buy properties. And this is where I'm going to focus on when I'm ready to expand my capacity. Then I do that. But that tax lien thing is a whole art to it that I'm not ready for. Oh, somebody crying. You can hear that? <laughs> yeah, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. I know how it is. <laughs> you know, first of all, that, that may be probably fake it. <laughs> <laughs> my son be faking. <laughs> Go be like, what's wrong? They be like, huh? <laughs> yeah, no, they in there. They, I'm glad. I'm surprised they in there fighting though. So I'm trying to. Oh, man. it might be real. All right, let's 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 let the Rizzo go with the kids. Um. All right, I'm, I'm gonna pick out some really good questions. Y'all definitely um brought brought y'all questions tonight. Uh, all right, one last question. Let's do Janir's question. How did you find build your team? That's a great question. Um, mm -hmm. Some of it was really testing them out. Um, and the biggest thing was referrals. But testing them out, I used to go around, same thing. If I see somebody working... I might be in pop up in the coals, not necessarily in the coals head, but if I see somebody outside working, hey, can I see what you're working on? Can you do it? And not necessarily being shy to see your work, find the people in Lowe's. And it's more so just about networking, seeing their work. I'll give you something small. And if you could do a small project, I may, you know, sort of grow you out. And that's how I did with the subs, with the GC. I just, he started as a roofer. And we just, we actually kind of grew together. It was like, all right, look, can you paint? Can you learn how to do this? And as he was learning, I was learning. Like I said, the team split in half. So now we, all of us learning, me and two teams at the same time, messing up some stuff, um, but learning and being flexible and actually knowing everything changed when I started pulling permits and the inspector told me that half the stuff was wrong, but that's another thing. But really learning, growing, asking referrals, I have a good list of people. So if you ever need anybody, um, Janir, let me know. I don't mind referring out a good part of my team to you too as well. Oh, I might need to um, hop on your flooring guy. Um, no, the, the, Robert, we not, uh, we, we, no one took disrespect. We know Jabbar is a celebrity. We, <laughs> we know he's a celebrity. Fun, man. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> we, we was not tripping. Um, all right, so uh, darn it, what was I gonna say? I was gonna say something else about um, building a team. I don't remember what I was gonna say. Oh, Lorenzo, it takes time to build your team as well, though. But go ahead, no, it does. Um, I that's really nice of you to share, tell everyone you'll share their information. Make sure y'all follow him at Jackson Rental Homes and then. He said he's willing to share um, his resources. Go ahead and, uh, oh, I know what I was going to say. Go ahead and DM him. Um, but this is what I was going to say. Here's another benefit of pulling your permits. People overlook how trained and skilled the inspectors are. They are another set of eyes on your project. 
there may be things that they see that you might not be in violation, but they might see you're doing wrong. If you make friends with them, they will share it with you because guess what? They went to way more, um, more in-depth, they got way more in-depth education around the contracting business than any general contractor that you could ever find. They literally, the education that they have to have is off the chain, off the chain. These guys got like master degree level education in code enforcement and development and, and con contracting everything like for real. So that's why it's always good to pull your permits because one, they're saving lives. Like a lot of times the things that they telling you that need to change, they're actually telling you to change it because it's saving people's lives in the house. And then two, like, it's just another set of eyes, right? I don't care how seasoned your general contract is, there's things for them to learn as well. So it's another set of eyes on your project. Now, that's not their job, but you make nice with them and be like, when they see something, if they mumble it under their breath, be like, well, what'd you say? <laughs> Repeat that? You think that's wrong? Okay. One time, one of my, one of my GCs, Found out, I mean, one of my inspectors found out that I was using a particular GC for a particular thing and warned me about him. Mm. It was like, yeah, I seen him burn, mess up a couple other people. Be careful with that one. <laughs> and guess what? He was trying it with me. <laughs> <laughs> and I nipped it in the bud because I, <laughs> you know. I, I'm cool with my inspector. They got a, I only got two West Philly inspectors, so I'm cool with both. You know, they come out. And I, when I started pulling permits, which is another part of the journey, but that changed everything because now it takes a lot of the brain work out. Like, look, is this right or wrong? And if you say it's right, then I'm going to go with it. If it's wrong, you go back to the contractor. You got to fix this because he said it's wrong. Your name is on this permit. Only way it's going to get it going to get fixed is if you prepare and do it the right way. So I love it. And you sleep better at night. You don't have to worry about being on the news because your building fell down. Like, no, you did everything the right way and it's okay. Amen. That goes a long way too. Amen. Um, thank you, Nicole Noel. If y'all don't hit the like button, this QA saved me. Thank you. Subscribe. That's what she be. Subscribe and give me the give us thumbs up. This one, this was a this one was for the books. We definitely gonna put this on a podcast. Lorenzo. Tell everyone, Rosie said, Lorenzo, always willing to share and very transparent. Yes, amen. Lorenzo, tell everyone about your $10,000 program. I know you didn't want to promote it, but listen, somebody out there just needs to just drop it because they don't have time to do all the research. What's that? Look, really, this was needed. Um, 12 month mentorship. We get to hold your hand through your projects, help you with your business funding. You get to see the lenders that we use to get in and out. The 28 step program, more in detail, find out when you need to order your projects. The biggest thing that we're going to promote is how to get in and out of your single family rehabs in four to six months. Um, and my first rehab project, I was in there for 14 months. The next one after that, I was in there for eight. And you can't make any money at all by being on a project for 14 months. So it's really giving you everything that I've learned in the last 14 years that I wish I had. 90% of it came from better than success. So unfortunately, if y'all didn't jump on a bandwagon at the first or second meeting and ride the wave, then you just gonna have to learn from us. But it really helps to be able to call someone, walk through your projects and have your hand held. But you got to do a little bit of work. You have to find your own deals. That's not something that we're going to do. When I say me, I got a partner, Anthony Lee. Um, and it's, it's a changed life because like I said, if you buy 10 houses, you're a millionaire, if not a you know, a multimillionaire in each year. I purchased multiple, almost 10, two double digit houses the last three years, if not four. So if you can imagine, we're only doing what, preaching what we're actually doing every day. Um, love to so have how you come did out. They get, and how did they get on to the, um, the program? How did they learn about the program? I got a ride along on Sunday um, and that was going to be our initial thing, but we have events scheduled one every month come on out to some some are free some are not if you can make it out we'll make sure we pull you to the side and say hey look this is how we do it um i'm proud because some of our members some of the mentees are in bts and you'll see them magically buying houses getting in and out like how are y'all doing it and we're just behind the scene like, like a proud dad like yeah you know keep going <laughs> for real you know, so we said i'm gonna go ahead Jenny. i'm sorry 
No, I'm saying I don't I don't actually don't even advertise the mentorship, but it is out there for people that slide in our DMs like, yeah, come through, we'll get you right. You know, I've been saying I feel like a mom with BTS for years. Now you understand. <laughs> yeah, because you're just watching everybody. It's not just me. I'm talking about Atia, Tracy, and this is our the bigger names in the city. Mike, we used to get it in every Wednesday. And Jabbar, it's like, wow, you know. Um, and that's just to name a few. That's not I'm forgetting because people still I haven't seen everybody in two years. But um, if the group ever came back together again, believe me, yeah. our the lunches and dinners are gonna be a little different now. Everybody's <laughs> ran it up for the last couple of years. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to get Prue out the way, like planning it and organizing it, and I want to do a retreat. And it, y'all know I always do some fancy stuff, so it'll be like super safe in terms of COVID. But like this, this, this is a different type of conversation. Um, but all right, so DM Lorenzo, he'll give you if you're really interested. His Instagram name is at Jackson Rental Homes is right here on the screen if you're interested in his program and um, everyone saying thank you everyone please give him a round of applause this was a really good conversation please go and stop them kids from killing each other <laughs> I know. I'm... no 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 I'm joking I'm, I'm not no, saying they they are. They're I'm, just saying I'm relieving you so that you can keep them from killing each other um yes a new member can come to retreat only members will be able to come to retreat by the way if you're interested in getting on the wait list to, for bts our doors are closed right now we are maxed out just go get on the wait list um we're actually moving some things around if you've been to if you're a member and you've been to one of our accountability calls them jones be popping and i can't i can't and limited amount of members so we're moving some things around to allow some new members with that being said if you, you'll only be able to get in if you're on the wait list. So you got to get on the wait, wait list. Thank you, Charisma. Everyone, please give a round of applause. Look, look at all these rounds of applause you got. This was excellent. Thank you. Thanks so much, many gems. Thanks, Lorenzo. Clap, 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 clap. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And let's excellent. get it in, man. If everybody did not in BTS, get on the wait list. I want to see y'all at the next retreat, man. It'll be a lot of fun. Yes, 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 yes. All right. Bye, everyone. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Um, set your alarm for next week. We're going to be here at 7 o'clock on Thursday. And don't forget, I got a freebie for you. Um, don't forget, I got a freebie for you. Bye, Lorenzo. You can hang up or it's up to you. But thank you so much. Mwah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Everyone, make sure you all follow him. But don't forget, I do have a freebie for you. We talked a lot about being a G uh, GCs. This was perfect for today. Um, get Go to that link to get access to my general contractor checklist if you want to become your own general contractor, right? Like Lorenzo has a general contract in business. He's got a GC, but he's also a GC as well. So um if you want to learn about that, get that checklist right there. It's right in the description. Download it, download it, download it. Um, it will be in the description in this video. I love y'all. I'll see y'all next week. Follow me on Instagram. And get on the wait list to BTS. This is being in the link as well. Love y'all. Have a good one. And I'll see y'all next week. Bye.